Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I speak to Dr. Fiona Shelton about growth mindset. Dr. Fiona Shelton is the head of the Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching at the University of Derby. Using her growth mindset, she recently became a Doctor of Education and is a 2019 National Teaching Fellow. Fiona is an amazing example of someone who has achieved success through having a growth mindset. I am very happy to interview her and hear all about her tips and advice for success. So thank you, Fiona, for coming onto this podcast today. And before I begin, also congratulations uh, on becoming a doctor. It's really impressive and so well done for that. Thank you. It's actually a testament to the skill almost that you have continued to learn and develop uh, over time and you keep learning and developing. So huge congratulations with that. So today we're talking about growth mindset. So would you be able to outline to me quite briefly what growth mindset is? I will. So very briefly, um, the concept of growth mindsets uh, grew out of the work of um, Carol Dweck, a psychologist, probably about 30 years ago now. But what Carol Dweck was interested in was um, students' attitudes to failure and how actually failure for some people was a disaster, but for other people, they really learned from it. And essentially, learning from things that go wrong, learning from failure, learning from really difficult situations is about growth mindset. If you fail at something and never try again and believe that you're rubbish at something or that you'll never be any good at something, it's a very fixed mindset. If you believe that you're not very good at maths, if you believe that you're not very good at certain things, they're very fixed mindsets that we have that are often to do with our intelligence. But actually, a growth mindset is one where we recognise that we've had a difficulty, we've found something difficult to overcome, but we've done it anyway. And we've learned something more as a result of it. And we know that the learning, a lot of the learning is within our own control and that we can use that learning to grow and to grow our mindset to know that it's not fixed. And that actually by changing our mindset to to recognize that, gosh, this is a difficult thing. And rather than always going back to things that I've not been so good at at the past, or indeed things that I have um, done incredibly well at at the past, going back and thinking, what was a situation that I went through where I found it difficult, but I succeeded, is one of the best ways of really developing a growth mindset. So it's about not having a fixed mind on what I can and can't do. It's about believing that I can improve and I can learn and I can grow by learning from the difficult things that happen as well as successes of course but yeah yeah it's always important to look at successes as well as failures but there's such good teaching in failure one of the things that was said in star wars for example is failure is the greatest teacher and it speaks true you can learn from mistakes and not have this fixed mindset of i am not good at maths or i'm not good at this you can do it if you just try and learn develop and everyone started from somewhere and kept developing even if initially it was a challenge And I do think, Alex, that it's very difficult for young people these days because we live in a society where our education system is built on testing. Mm. And because of that, if we make mistakes and we get things wrong or we fail at something or we're deemed to be below a particular level, it starts to give us those fixed mindsets. So the very youngest children in the world believe they can do anything. Yeah. And it's only when they start to fail at something or they start to compare themselves with other people that they realise they're not so good at something or that they aren't as good at that other person at something. And I think this, this is one of the issues is that it doesn't mean that we're not good. It just means that other people are sometimes a bit better at things than we are, but it doesn't mean that we're not good at them. And you know, if young children believe that they can do anything, what is it that then stops them? And that's when you start to get a fixed mindset in terms of um, believing that your intelligence is actually at a particular level and that you can never get better at something. And it's just not true. 
Well, just thinking about what you've said there, like when children are young, they spend ages learning to walk and they fail and they get back up and they try things differently and eventually they get it. Some people go in it a lot quicker than others, but it's just that, it's just like that. And I think growth mindset is, as you're saying, really important because you can you can focus on what your weaknesses are, what you struggle with slightly more, and you can improve them to become a lot more rounded. I was speaking to Matt Galuli in the digital capability episode of this podcast series, and he said that he thought growth mindset was one of the most important skills because about how and to continue to keep learning and developing. Would you agree with that statement? And also, why might you think growth mindset is important? I do. I really agree with that statement because I think the point of having a growth mindset rather than a fixed one is that the, we believe we can get better at things. We believe we can learn more things and we believe we can enhance our skills and our learning and our knowledge. And the reason that growth mindsets are important is, well, if we just stop for a moment and think about something that you once weren't very good at. So if you play a musical instrument or you decide you're going to learn how to do something new. So I've just recently learned, starting to learn to play the harp. Now, um, when I was much younger, I was, you know, I could read music. I was a very good um, clarinetist, actually. I could play the clarinet very well. Uh, when I started to learn to play the harp, um, I now had to also learn the bass clef notes as well as the treble clef notes. I wasn't used to that. I had to learn how to play an instrument that was unfamiliar to me. And it was really hard. It didn't mean that it wasn't enjoyable, but it was really hard. But actually, at the point where I was first of all starting to learn to play the harp, it was really difficult. It was really difficult because I was learning a whole set of new skills. I could have at that point stopped and said, that's it, I'm not going to bother. But I knew that practice and perseverance would help me to be able to play some tunes. I don't, didn't ever think for a second that I was going to be playing in an orchestra, mm -hmm. but actually to give myself the opportunity to play, to get pleasure from playing the harp, um, I knew I had to keep practicing. And by you know, this Christmas, I just learned to play a Christmas carol. And it was great. I played it with both hands. I could play it really well. And, you know, my family could listen to that and enjoy it too. And so it's this idea of knowing that you can do something if you try, if you persevere. You might not be brilliant at it at the end, but you'll be better than you were when you first started and recognising that you make improvements as you go along. And it's, and it's perseverance is really part of that, but being positive about that perseverance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that I think is really important is the idea that you haven't got something yet and so even if it is a struggle like you were saying with the uh, with you learning to play the instrument if you just keep going and set yourself shorter goals you're not don't necessarily promise yourself you're going to be an expert within a few weeks but just keep going and keep learning you can get to this stage and often you can get yourself way further than you thought exactly and you know let's let's just remind ourselves of some of the things that we can do without even thinking about so, you know, we drive, we drive cars, we use computers, we write, we read. These are all things that were really hard for us once upon a time ago, mm -hmm. but we persevere and we practice and we really want to do something. And the things that we really want to do, we're very motivated to do. It's often the things that we don't really want to do, but we have to do that we also have to have grind, growth mindset with. Yeah. But, you know, learning is about changing your, changing what you you, as kind of a state of mind, if you like. So if you didn't know something and then you do know something, a change has occurred in the middle. Now learning, nobody ever said it's going to be easy to learn this thing. Some things are easier to learn than others, but actually things are difficult to learn. So learning can be fun and it particularly becomes fun as you get better at stuff and realise that actually I'm quite good at this. But the, the discomfort that we feel when we're learning something new is all right. We should sit with that discomfort and we should persevere through that discomfort because by the time we come out the other side of it, that's when you look back and go, Phew, I did that thing and I did it well and now I can do that thing that I didn't think I could. Um, I don't know if you drive um, yes. at all, but you know, I remember my first driving lesson and kangarooing down the road. Um, I remember finding it really hard 
to do um, uphill to, you know, to, to be able to go uphill and stop and start as I was going uphill. I'm great at uphill starts now. I'm really good yeah. at that. Well, I learned to drive in Sheffield as well. So that helped because it's so hilly. But that is that discomfort and that learning isn't always fun, but actually you enjoy it once you get to the other side. Yeah, just thinking about that driving analogy. Um, when I learned to drive, there were some parts of it that I was really quite bad at, particularly parking. And the only way, the reason why I can now park all right, not necessarily the best parker in the world, but the reason why I can park all right now is because of practice and because I force myself to park. Um, however, if, let's say I'm not very good at reverse parking. If I then say I'm never going to do that, I'm only ever going to drive and park forwards, I will never lo- learn that skill. So you've got to practice it, even if you found one way of doing it, it might also be good to learn another way because that will enhance your skills further. And you'll only learn it through practice because you're always started as a beginner somewhere. Exactly. And I think as well that, you know, we, you talked before about um, failure and making mistakes. And actually, a really, I think a really good example is uh, people who play video games. Mm-hmm. So you, you're on a level. I don't play video games, I but do. I have played I have played Sonic the Hedgehog (laughs) in the past, but I can think about a time when I will have played Sonic the Hedgehog many moons ago, probably now, but doing a particular level and then something, then me making a mistake in a level because I jumped at the wrong point or I should have actually gone down at a certain point and then losing that level, but going back and playing it the next time, knowing that that was my mistake and therefore making sure that I jump at an earlier point this time. Now, video games players will always go back and persevere. Mm. They will get to the next level and the next level and the next level because they're learning They're learning all the time from mistakes or from having not done something the last time or by trying something new the next time. It's a really good example of why a mistake can teach you how to do something better in the future. Yeah, it's all about reflecting upon that mistake, working out what could have gone wrong. You might not get what actually what the mistake was first time, but trying to have a guess what went wrong and then trying to see what can happen next time. And just like in a video game, if you're a student who sat an exam and let's say you've made a mistake, you've you failed that exam or you've not done as well as you thought you would have done, next time, try something different and have a go and you might get better. It's all about trying to see, reflect on what those changes are and having the mindset just to keep going at it and trying different things to get there. Absolutely. And it is also okay to know that there are some things that we know that we're not quite as good at as others mm-hmm. it's knowing that and and you know there are some things we prefer to do than other things and that's okay too it's, it's not to say that we should be trying to learn to do something new all the time especially if they're things that we really hate doing for example um so it is all right to kind of think well you know i'm not great at that but i'm probably not bothered that i'm not great at it because i don't really want to do it um, but when it comes to a work situation or to a study situation, it does matter. Mm. It does matter to improve. It does matter to learn more. And it does matter to have a growth mindset in that. Because you know, if, like you just said, if you if you don't do very well in an exam, the likelihood is you weren't properly prepared. If you didn't know the stuff, then next time you make sure that you learn it. You make sure that you've put the steps in place to have the knowledge that you needed at your fingertips so that the next time you do a similar exam, you've got the stuff, you've got control over your learning. And so I think the thing about study is it does matter about having a growth mindset mm-hmm. as, as with work. Yeah, I totally agree. Like the difference between someone has a growth mindset when they get feedback on an assignment versus someone who doesn't. So if you first get your feedback and you don't have a growth mindset, you might go, well, I'm bad at critical analysis. I'm bad at writing. Whereas some of the growth mindset might look at that and go, this is an opportunity to change and look what I can work on now to get better and improve my grades. That is a really good example. And I think, you know, if you've um, just uh, submitted a piece of work and the feedback has been, you need to have a deeper critical insight into whatever the thing might be, or you need to develop your critical arguments. You know when you're doing your next assignment that you had that feedback and that to get a better result, to get a better grade, if you work on that specific piece of feedback and you're very conscious of it as you're doing your uh, new piece of study, your new assignment, if you really take yourself through that um, 
reflecting and, and concentrating on that particular element, the likelihood is it will be better mm -hmm. than it was the last time. And, you know, looking, well, what did I write about last time? Oh, I, I didn't really talk about this. I didn't use that language. I should have drawn in some different perspectives. Let me see if I can do it this time and make a better job of it. And the likelihood is that you will do and you'll either not get that feedback again or you'll get feedback to say this is much better or you'll get a better grade or all three. Yeah. I think one big thing about university with this growth mindset type perspective is you're not expected to get grades that are really high in your first year. University, the way it works at the moment is you get every year, the percentage that the grades are worth gets higher. And part of the reason that, that I think is behind that is that you can grow and improve on the feedback as you go. And it's not, university isn't a marathon. You're not expected to be good at everything to start with, but just use the feedback, be positive and look at, what's going wrong and try and adapt and improve accordingly to get the marks. Exactly. And there are lots of places where that feedback comes from. So we get it from each other on a day to day basis when we're having discussions and we're talking to our colleagues and to our peers. And um, so that, you know, there might be feedback that you get that you think, oh, I hadn't thought about that in my assignment just because you're having a discussion together about a theory or something. You get feedback that's very formalised because it will be written mm. in an assignment. But you, then you've also got your own personal, yeah. reflective, critical feedback that you do yourself. I wish I'd spent more time proofreading my assignment. If I had spent more time proofreading my assignment, I could have probably got an extra 10% on my grade because it would have had fewer mistakes in it or it, I wouldn't have made that mistake over there or whatever it might be. So there's also, it's not just feedback from other mm. people, it's also our own reflective feedback that can help us to improve um, the work that we do well only you know what's happened in your exam process the examiner or the marker could only see what you've given and the people that you interact with they only see one side of you but you personally know how you've organized yourself how you've managed your time uh, when you did the work and you can properly reflect on that and I'd definitely recommend reflecting on that process as well as the feedback that you've got and writing yeah. it down somewhere to look back at the next time and target improvements Exactly. What preparation did I do as I was leading up to this piece of work that I've now got to um, contend with? And it's that type of approach that if I'd have done more of that before I went in to do the exam or before I sat down to write the assignment, I might have done better. And, and that's the thing about growth mindset is it's recognising that, I, yeah, OK, I could have done that better. And next time I will. Yeah. And I won't let it put me off. What I'm not going to do is go, right, that's it. Never doing an exam again then. That's it. Never doing that again. Because life doesn't work like that. We have to, you know, oh, no, I got something wrong at work. I'm not going in tomorrow. <laughs> we can't do that. We, we Life doesn't work like that. We have to learn that, oh, gosh, that didn't go so well. That wasn't so great. I made a mistake on that. But next time I won't. Next time I'll learn from that mistake. Next time I'll learn from the process that I went through that took me to that point and I'll change it here mm -hmm. so that in this area here where I made the mistake or where I went wrong, I won't do that again. And, and that's the thing, you know, we, we have to persevere with our studies. We, mm -hmm. we have to persevere with the things that happen in life. And of course, there are times when certain things will happen, which do mean we have to halt. But generally, you know, giving up isn't an option for the majority of us who have decided that we want a degree, we want a doctorate, we want our master's, whatever it might be. And actually, it's, you know, that perseverance is part of the growth mindset. But it is really going back and thinking about how did I succeed at this before? Because I found it difficult then too. But it's knowing that you can. Yeah. It's knowing that you can succeed. I agree with you with that. I'm just thinking about what you're saying about how you can make changes. And um, if you do try a new change and it doesn't work, you're only in the same position as you were before when you had when you tried originally and it failed. So if you do try something, it doesn't work first time. Try again. Don't worry. If you don't try at all, then you're in the same position forever. If you never try to change that, so do try and do try and improve. Exactly, and I think. That's a really, really good point that you make there, because what we don't want to do is to just be constantly in a place where we never get any better at things because we just keep doing the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's exactly the point that you're making, that it's that point in change. When do we decide that actually I probably need to stop doing that? That doesn't work for me. Let's try something different. And I think your examples that you've given already, Alex, around I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to try this differently is a really, really good point. Thank you. Do you have any other advice about growth mindset? 
I suppose what I would say in terms of advice is that know that you can get smarter, know that you can get better at something, know that by strengthening your approaches and by doing additional work and by making changes, what you actually do is start to change the way that your brain sees how you go through things. And and that's a key part of the the psychology, I think, that sits behind growth mindsets. So if if you've got a goal and you know that um, it's a hard goal to achieve, let's face it, if we're talking about higher education and we're talking about achieving a degree outcome, whichever level that degree is at, that's a if every if it was easy, we would just sail through. And it's not easy because we get difficult pieces of work that we have to do. But if you really want to get that degree and you really want to work towards it and you really want to do well and you want to reach your goal, then actually knowing that the effort that you put in, knowing that the preparation that you do and knowing how you change some of the mistakes that you made in the past are all the ways that will help you to achieve your goal. So spend a bit more time, work a bit harder, read some different sources explore different ways of doing things and really look at the feedback that you've been given already and all of those things will help you to succeed your goal and that's what I would say is don't give up ask questions if you don't understand something find out there's nothing worse than having a gap in your knowledge Mm -hmm. so if you've got if you've got nobody to ask ask google ask a journal ask your librarians at the university, but somebody will help you to fill a knowledge gap if, you, if, you, if you've got something that's missing, but ask questions to help you to improve. And we're all here as members of staff in the university. All our students, their success is our success. So, you know, ask questions, push yourself out of your comfort zone, try harder, explore new ways of doing things, don't give up. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I don't think I could say better than that myself. Uh, That was really good. Thank you so much for your time, Fiona. And thank you for being willing to be interviewed for this series. I really enjoyed talking to Fiona about growth mindset today. It was really interesting to hear about how through practice and perseverance, you can really improve upon yourself. I think that one of the key points that came from this interview today was that throughout our lives, we've applied a growth mindset, particularly when we're younger or when playing games. But sometimes through comparing ourselves to others, or just naturally, we can categorise ourselves as being really bad at something, even if that's not the case. Therefore, having a growth mindset is not about being fixed in relation to your abilities within a specific skill or area. Another key point raised by Fiona today was about how you can really use your feedback, particularly self-imposed feedback, to reflect and improve over time. Fiona discussed about how At university, you do really need to think about improving your skills and targeting those weaknesses that you have if you want to find success there. The final key point that I'll highlight from this interview today is that if you do things in the same way, then you're not going to develop or improve. Consider how you can grow and don't be afraid of trying new things to improve, as even if they don't work on the first attempt, you can work on them, you can reflect on them, and they may work the second or the third time around. If you don't change what you're doing, you're always going to be in the same position. But if you do, you might find that you have a better result. Later in the series, we will talk about how useful failure is for your development in a really honest and insightful interview with David Bobbitt Shaw. The next episode in the series is another discussion about growth mindset, this time with Associate Professor Melanie Pope. After I interviewed Fiona, she suggested that I get in touch with Melanie, as she's really passionate about the area. My interview with Melanie does not disappoint and it really adds nicely to this one. In addition to growth mindset, we discuss all about how behind a successful person is often a series of failures that we as an outsider don't see. And I think this is really important to to think about when you do compare yourself to others is that you don't see the other people behind the scenes. We also discuss about how you can have both a fixed mindset and a growth mindset at once in relation to different topics. So do be sure to check that episode out when it releases next Monday. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alex Underwood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar 
Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.